Hello, and welcome to the session dedicated to testing analytics. My name is Cyril Benkimoun, and I'm a senior business development engineer at Vector, working on the SCORE product. SCORE is an advanced solution for reporting, which could be described as a business intelligence tool for engineering data. And today, I'm going to discuss about the KPI automations and how we can consolidate data on top of tests and requirements. Here is the agenda of the presentation. I will do a quick introduction, and then I will discuss about the overall approach in such context of KPIs creation. Then I will highlight some KPIs to describe the different type of them that we can use. And then I will do a conclusion. So let's start with this introduction. On these slides, I would like to highlight the two main issues that we can face when we want to deploy KPIs. The first issues regard the aggregation methods. We are dealing with complex projects with multiple components driven by multiple teams with different objectives. The second issues regard the data aggregation process. They are separated in different silos and we need to synchronize and consolidate its data. So let's have a look at this illustration. This is a house and we're asking to the different teams if the house is safe. The first team will probably say yes, all the tests are successful. The second one is facing one single issue, which is mostly fine. The third one is definitely facing issues and we understand that we will probably have to wait for different test campaigns before we can get a successful rate. The last team is completely stuck. The, the customer wants a garage tools, but the requirements are not yet defined. So we don't know what size, how secure it should be. And we clearly understand that the lack of definition of requirements literally affect the test activities. So looking at the overall system is very important. And this is what's happening in real life. In real life, we are working with living projects where the requirements keep updating, added or removed. We have planning to respect, and we have to consider the human feedback to justify the choices and the temporary failure in the test activities. We also promote the reuse, so we avoid starting from scratch again and again. From this, we understand that we have two concepts to, to deal with. First, we need to take into consideration the trend. We are not looking at the last version of the verdict, but the full history of the data. The second information, which is very important, is that the objects are links between each other. And because they are links, they may impact each other. So testing analytics solutions will consider the whole object in the full ecosystem. Now, now let's have a look at the overall approach. First, what are we working with? We're working with tests and requirements. These are objects with attributes such as safety classifications, life cycle status, verdict, typology, and so on. So we are using the attributes to create quality characteristics. This is very similar to what we are doing with source code. The quality characteristics are broken down into different sub-characteristics, such as maintainability, efficiency, reliability, and so on. And we clearly understand that if a test is not complex, it will be easier to maintain. So we're going to use these quality informations to write the elements, to track and to review all objects. Now that we know the data we are working with, we need to push the data into a framework. And this is not a simple dashboard solution. This framework has to be clever enough to rate the elements, to highlight them, and to put on the top of the list what are the biggest issues. It has to be flexible as well because we're dealing with different type of data, and we will also probably want to adjust the KPIs or create a new one. It has to be interactive. As we said, it's important to keep the human in the loop and considering the feedback is a critical point in such solutions. And it has to be intuitive as well. We are going to define KPIs and we will probably need to break down these KPIs according to the project structures from component to subcomponents, and to distribute that according to different attributes. So the solutions for testing analytics should provide these KPIs and all the monitoring features that are coming with. 
now that we know where we are going to push the data, we need to be efficient in that pushing mechanism. And the key word for that is automations. If we look at these pipes, we can see on the left one where we don't have any automation process which is in place. So we are keeping time on, on, on building reports, consolidation of data and so on. On the right pie, we can see that we can spend the time on analyzing the results. And because we analyze the results, we find issues and we find solutions. So this is a way to continuously improve ourselves. So automation is a shortcut for clean and reliable results. Now that we have a good process in place, we need to understand how we can make that very efficient. Building a trend of a nice KPI is a good thing, but if you don't act on these KPIs, it's a, it's a nonsense activities. So this is what we are talking about continuous quality process. A lot of projects are moving to Agile, but besides this Agile topic, everybody is looking for a high reactivity. So putting in place this continuous quality gates is a way to involve all the stakeholders in the loop and to continu continuously track every changes that we are made, what, that we are doing to our product. Here is a snapshot of a quality gate process. This is a complex one, but we could for sure adjust this quality gates to your project objectives or constraints. But here we have different pillars in the different quality gates. The first pillars regards the process quality gates. Here we don't care about the product quality as a whole. What we consider here are all the changes that we made to the product. And we want all the changes to be good. So we are actually acting on the mindset of the stakeholders. The second pillars regard the product quality. So here we are looking at the quality of the whole product and we are evaluating the gap between its quality and the standard expectations. The third pillars regard the reliability gates. So here the idea is to increase the confidence that we can have in the delivered product. So this continuous quality topics is a way to continuously improve your process, your project, and your project. So now let's have a look at the different KPIs that we can deal with. First, let's work with the raw data informations. On that slide, I'm highlighting a requirement test coverage informations. So this is based on a list of requirements, which has different attributes that we're going to use to evaluate what are the number of requirements, what are the requirements which should be tested according to the attributes validation uh, method. We can also find and count the number of requirements which actually have tests, and we can also count the number of requirements where the, um, the past verdict is, is OK, which means that all the tests are passed. If we do track this information along the time, we can get this trend. On this, we can find two kinds of informations. First, the completion type of indicators, which will be based, for instance, on the number of requirements which doesn't have any test. At the end of the project, they should all have a test, so we can track this information along the time. We can also find interesting indicators on the quality of the product. If we look at the differences between these two lines, we can get the number of tests which are in failures. This is directly linked to the quality itself. Still working with raw data, we can work with test effectiveness, which is a similar indicators based on the number of test cases where the verdict is passed. And here I would like to highlight the fact that we can build with ratio and amount. So the first case, we have this line which shows the trend of the ratio. So the ratio is quite stable, which probably means, and it, actually it is good. So, but as it is stable, we probably think that there's not a lot of work in that project. But if we look at the amount of the number of test cases, we can see that there is a high activity because the number of tests is highly increasing. So it's always important to take into consideration the ratio versus the amount. Still working with raw data, 
um, we mentioned that we may have a different context of execution of our test. This is a snapshot uh, where we can see the different uh, units uh, which are compiled in different compilers, which means that the same test cases will probably have different results regarding the variance. And so we expect the tools to have a way to easily extract this information and to highlight the efficiencies of the, the test regarding the different uh, context. Now let's have a look at the trend analysis. So the project, uh, the product uh, stores the information along the time. So here we have a, a theoretical graphic of a test result. It moves from pass to failed and fail to passed. So two information are very interesting when we want to analyze this trend. First, we can analyze the number of changes in terms of states results. If the number of changes is very high, it means that the stability of the test is not good and it's not probably a reliable test. It's like a random test, actually. The second information which could be interesting is the time that the test spent in the failure state. If this rate is very high, it probably means that the test is not really interesting. Having a way to sort your test would be very efficient to highlight these objects. When we deal with trend, we also have to take into consideration the milestone concept. Here is a graphic which represents the different uh, stage gates of the project. So this could be also working, working in the agile context with different sprints. The idea here is to manage the long-term objectives. And we know that we will reach a certain values, but it will take time to do that. And what we want to do is to have intermediate stage gates where we can evaluate if we are inside the, the, the track. So we can easily highlight these objectives in such features. And we could also use forecast features to anticipate critical deviations on the long-term objectives. Now I would like to focus on the fact that all objects are actually linked between each other. And the change-based monitoring is actually uh, another word for the, the impact analysis. I would like to highlight this with a sample. We have a project where we change the requirement from AZLB to AZLD. So this has an impact on the test activities. And on particular of the card coverage, we must provide more coverage on some part of the codes. So we expect the tools to first be able to set up these uh, changes to affect these changes. And we will want to see that it has an impact on the coverage KPIs. And then, we should highlight the fact that there are some objects which are, which are directly linked to the requirement. And so uh, we can see here a list of functions which are impacted by these changes because they are not compliant anymore due to these changes of safety classification. The last KPIs I would like to highlight regard the guideline compliance. It's like, um, in that case, actually, I'm going to describe the uh, design uh, aspect of a test. So here we can see a test where we got, I mean, it's a useless test. It starts, it does nothing, and it asserts true. So there is no linkage to requirements. We don't have any expected outputs. So this is a useless test. So the idea is to use the different attributes of a test and to create what we call quality rules that everybody should respect when they are doing their design. For instance, we could check if we have every test has an expected output. We can evaluate the, the name of the test, or we can just look if there is a link to our requirements. We could use the analytics techniques to uh, evaluate that and to track every deviations to this coding standard, I mean, design standard. And then we can create a compliance rate and evaluate which elements are actually respecting these design guidelines. So let's have a look at the conclusion. Um, there are three big topics I would like to highlight now. First, we have seen that um, when we want to deploy KPIs, we actually need a real framework. It's not just a simple dashboard solutions. It has to have an open APIs because it should fit your environment. 
we are dealing with importing data and probably exporting data back to your to your environments. The interface should be customizable as we need to adjust uh, the data to the different project specificities. We also see that um, the automation is a very important uh, concept if you want to be efficient on the field. The second thing which is very important today is that uh, KPIs must be actionable. Building a nice graphic and a nice trend is important, but this is not sufficient. We must find a way to provide relevant information to the stakeholders. And a continuous quality process is a way to, on a daily basis, to provide relevant feedback. On the more long-term objectives, working with a milestone is a good way to anticipate critical deviations. And the last point is that the KPI solution must be efficient. We don't care about building a very clever indicators or something which is mathematically very beautiful. What is important is that the indicators that we provide to the stakeholders make make sense for him. And the decision makers must have a way to find the right elements. And so the rating systems is a good way to actually act and to take into consideration the KPIs. It's also very important to use uh, a set of predefined out-of-the-box uh, indicators which are coming from the business needs. Uh, there's a lot of standards that provide such um, indicators and providing these indicators is a good way to increase the relationships, uh, the confidence in the relationships that you may have with your uh, customers. The last very uh, point uh, regarding the efficiency of the solutions regard the impact analysis. So the change-based monitoring is very, very important as we understood that every type of object may impact each other. And so it's important to be able to track all these impacts. So I will fi we'll finish with a graphic, of course. Um, this is um, a, a graphic which is based on real data, uh, which uh, we are actually providing internally. Uh, we are using our tool. Um, on this graphic, we um, uh, do an overlapping of the, the test uh, result, which are the bars, and the requirement information, which are all the lines. And uh, here, I just would like to see that using such um, solution is uh, also a good way to highlight your process. And uh, so I would like to focus on three points. Um, the first point is the, um, regarding the, uh, the differences between the, the requirements that we have to implement and the number of requirements which are actually implemented. So there is a differences, which means that not all of them are actually implemented, uh, which is something uh, which was true at that time. The second thing that I would like to highlight is uh, the number two, where we see a flat number of requirements, which means that no more requirements are added to the product. And we have a huge increase of the test number. This is basically showing a phases where we work on the robustness of a product. The third point that we'd like to highlight is um, we can see a, a synchronization in terms of uh, new requirements and new tests. And this is actually highlighting our process. We have a continuous quality gate which prohibits the introduction of a new requirement without having an associated test. This is affecting the, the productivity of the team for sure, but at the end, we have a much good um, vision in terms of um, uh, confidence in the delivery of the product. So that's all. I hope you find this in presentation interesting, and I will be pleased to answer to all of your questions. Thank you very much.